background. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, we are here for day five of Design Forward. And on Fridays, we like to do a little bit of a roundup with those of us in the collab talking about what's going on in the module. Um, you may notice I'm a fox today. Um, <clears throat> that's just how I'm caring for myself. And um, we're going to start off with Robin. We're going to let Robin talk a little bit about what you have been noticing in Design Forward this week. Take it away, Robin. Um, yeah, I'm reporting to you live from Banks Chevrolet in Concord, where I'm sitting in a brand new GMC truck that I am not purchasing. Um, but this might be the first time Design Forward has broadcast live from a car dealership. Um, and I have really been enjoying getting to know you all in the in the module this week. Um, and I wanted to talk briefly about something that Hillary was um, bringing up in one of the questions about sort of being um, I can't remember the word you used, but it was sort of about a skepticism about about care and also about the burden of care and about making care a formal part of education. Um, and I have to say uh, care and also another word is love um, that has sometimes raised my hackles when it's used in education. Um, and I haven't fully sorted out the things about the words care and love that I find problematic. Um, but I wrote a little bit about that in response um, to you, Hillary. And I was also thinking about how um, when Kath, uh, Kathleen Fitzpatrick in the recent keynote that we had talked about generosity, that seemed like a word that encompassed a lot about care and love, but gave me um, some more entry points, I think. So uh, I've been thinking about those three words um, as they orbit around, and I really appreciated some of the questions that you raised there. And with that, I'll turn it over to whatever fox or rabbit wants to talk next. Um, East Air Bunny, would you like to say something now? Yes, sure. Um, so what I've been kind of ruminating on today um, is in reaction to a couple of the first comments on the um, question about uh, some of the ways that students can participate in communities of care and demonstrate care and compassion for their instructors. And I'm thinking a lot about um, how transparency and trust are two kind of key things involved in communities of care and um, how without transparency. So transparency in our teaching, um, transparency in what teachers are going through or what you might be going through, you know, as you teach, um, trust in students to, um, you know, not take advantage of, uh, you know, information like that. Um, all of that is kind of required, I think, in a community of care. And I'm thinking a lot about how that's hard and scary because um, and in the professional world, we wanna come off as um, confident and uh, we have a, all of our ducks in a row, but um, the minute that we kind of open ourselves up for uh, um, those kind of conversations, I think we can have a lot more of a richer experience. So that's what I'm thinking about. And I'll toss it over to Foxy. Thank you. And what I, I, my favorite thing about the video today is watching Cassidy try to keep a straight face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is giving me so much joy. Um, but my favorite thing now, one thing I wanted to talk about from this week, and this kind of links to Toronto, um, who I'm really enjoying that reading. I keep going back to it and thinking about um, like the big picture of care in our society, in our culture, in our political um, sphere and how we um, work towards a more caring, more just society. And, you know, particularly because I think, I think I could safely say most of us would agree that over the last few years, it's been a little disappointing seeing um, how, how our larger culture is not exhibiting care necessarily for the community and for others. And so I was thinking about like, well, what role do we have in education to promote care, not just because it makes for better pedagogy, but because we want to be putting, giving our students exposure, like we want to help them become more caring citizens and more caring people. And it reminded me of something that years and years ago, a therapist told me after my um, first um, child was born. And I talked about how I really wanted my child to develop a sense of empathy. And I, and I wanted, and I wanted to figure out like, what, how do I parent a child to be more, to, to have empathy? 
And she said, you know, what research has shown is that um, you don't become, you don't teach somebody empathy. You don't tell them this is how you should be more emp empathetic. You and you definitely don't do it by saying, well, you should always think about everything from, hey, dude, I'm recording a video. That's very loud. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, my um, husband was opening a box. Um, you don't do it by saying, uh, you know, you should, you should think about this from other people's perspective every time that they're having trouble. What she said is that actually you do it by being empathetic to them. Like the more empathy you show them, the more likely they are to become more empathetic. And I think that's the case for this concept of care as well. We can't teach our people to be caring, right? That's not how it works. But what we can do by caring for people is, is foster a culture of caring that people are more likely to say, oh, because I feel cared for, I also feel safe caring for others. And I see the, the um, impact and importance of caring for others. So anyway, that's something I've been thinking about. And Cassidy, we kind of also, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but you, you got to love, like, you, you have to foster a culture of care. Eric, shut the hell up. I'm recording. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was me caring for, him, for myself <laughs> and showing him how to care for me. So that was actually a very caring act that I just did there. <laughs> he left. He's very mad now. Um, go ahead, Cassidy. Anything you want to share that you've thought about or witnessed or read this week, Cassidy? We kind of sprung this on Cassidy. So. <laughs> I kind of like um, what you were talking about and what Hannah was kind of talking about, about, um, about transparency and kind of like showing care by demonstrating. I think right now with a lot of students, I see a lot of burnout and I see a lot of apathy because of that. And that's incredibly concerning. Um, and I could go on a whole tangent about social media and how that's just exacerbating everything, but I'm not going to do that to you. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of this idea of like, being transparent and being like, hey, like I'm not perfect. The world is chaotic and that's okay. And I think first teaching students how to be okay with the chaos then opens them up to maybe think about it more and care more and teach them that like, we don't know what's going on and it's scary and that's okay, but we're going to get through it. Like here are things we can do and kind of just like pulling back the curtain a little bit and being like, we're all human. This is natural. You don't have to hide behind some stony facade. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's all I have to say on that. That's great, Cassie. We love, love, love having your perspective and voice in the module. And I hope somebody has told you this. I think maybe Hannah talked to you about maybe you doing one of the dispatches next week. Yes. So everybody stay tuned next week. Cassidy's going to take over the collab and do a dispatch. Um, but I'm going to leave it at that because this is longer than usual. And we hope everybody has a great weekend and keeps um, participating and um, take, ca take care. Bye. Bye. Hold. Okay.